we hosted um, at our offices in New York recently the annual meeting of the Partnership for Clean Competition, you know, drug testing people, not only from professional, but um, amateur sports as well. And I think there's really widespread recognition in that group that Major League Baseball has the best drug program. And by that, I mean testing as well as investigative capacity. Um, the number of tests that we do, given the number of athletes we employ, is the best anywhere, professional or amateur sports. Um, I do not see it as a program failure that we have positive tests. You're all, I, you know, I doubt, I doubt that we will ever get to the point where any sport can say with 100% certainty, no athlete is using a performance enhancing drug. Um, occasionally, athletes are going to make a bad decision, and I think we have a program in place that is the best at catching them if they make that decision. Some players, um, most notably Anthony Rizzo, just down the hall here, have said that maybe there's not enough random tests. Well, there's a you know, dramatic increase in the number of tests as part of this new basic agreement. Um, here's one of the, you know, look. Anthony Rizzo is certainly entitled to have whatever opinion he wants to have, but to criticize the program based on the random experience of one player over a very short period of time, uh, probably not the, the best form of criticism. Um, you know, our athletes are tested more frequently than any athlete in any professional sport, both blood and urine, and they are all random. Um, and I am really confident in, in the strength of the program. Commissioner, uh, did Sterling Marte appeal the decision? No, he did not. Has uh, Major League Baseball stepped in to aid in the Junko Gung uh, visa process? Did go to that point at all? Um, we're, we're monitoring uh, the situation. We have not been actively involved other than giving advice. That's what we ordinarily do with respect to immigration matters. They're generally ha handled at the local level by the club. Um, they're really in a position to do that more effectively than we are. Commissioner, do you see the fact that you're projected to have fewer teams and less money paid in luxury tax this season a, a reflection of success of the, the changes made to that program? I think that um, the number of teams and the amount of money that's paid um, under the competitive balance tax, it has a certain cyclical quality to it. Um, you know, teams that get way above the threshold come to the conclusion that it's time to, you know, engage in that natural cycling that always takes place in baseball, go to younger players. So there's going to be ups and downs there. Um, I do believe that, um, and you know, really hats off to Dan Halem, uh, Ron Fowler and his crew. I think they did a really effective job in terms of the negotiation of the basic agreement and um, in particular made sure that the competitive balance tax was structured in a way which will promote competitive balance in the game over the long haul.